Hello everyone and welcome to .NET Core Central. In today's video, I am going to continue my discussion on internal soft links. And for today, the topic of discussion will be select and select many. These two extension methods on ienumerables. If you have not watched my last video, I would strongly encourage to watch that because that is where I started digging inside of link internals with where and I'll provide the link above for reference. Now, in my last video, first I have explored using a normal where which is provided out of box in link. And then I created my own extension method where I implemented where using the extension method, the func delegate, and then the yield return keyword. These are the three main constituents of link for most of the methods. Now today I'll be exploring select and select many, but before I do that, let me refactor this function and move it out. And let's create a new method. And let's say it's a demo. And for the time being, I'm just going to delete it from the main method. So let's start exploring select and select many. But to do that, first I'm going to create a couple of data structures. So I'll start with a class and I'm going to name it as customer. And the customer class, let me declare it as public. It's going to have a couple of properties. So the first one will be name. And the second one will be phone. So the phone time does not exist. So let me create a new type for phone. And now inside of phone, also we are going to have a couple more properties. First one will be the number. And the reason I'm keeping number a string because in most cases, the numbers, phone numbers are defined with dash and plus. So it is better to keep it as a string. And the next property is going to be phone type. It's an enum phone type. And let me create this type as well. And now let's go and modify this from class to enum. And let's say it's going to have two properties for the time being. One is home and second one is cell. So once I declare these data types, let's go and populate the data. So let's say var customers equal to new array. And inside of the array, let's say new customer. And for the customer name, John. And for phone number, we're going to again have a new area of phone. And for number, let's say, and font type dot cell. Let's get this into a new line. I think in the customer, I declared font as a single. So let's rename it. Let's change this to font array and let's rename this property also. So instead of font, let's make it as fonts. So now let's go back here. Yep, everything looks fine. Let's take it to the new line and this phone also to the new line and let's make it appropriate. Okay, so so this is the new customer and for the phone, let's keep a couple of phone record. And for the next phone, let's give a number And for phone type, let's say phone type dot home number. So this is the first customer and let's create another customer. And for this customer, let's say name equal to Jane. And then for phones, we're going to have new phone of and then for number
let's give a valid format this time font type equal to font type dot cell and then in the new phone and number equal to and phone type equal to home so we created an array of customer we have two customer john and jane and they have multiple phones so now first let's explore how select works in c sharp programming language so for that let's say we need to select just the customer name and not the entire phone and everything else so for that what we can do is we can say customer names equal to customer dot select and here we can say customer dot name that's all now this name can be an object so we can say new of this so it's an anonymous type at this case or it can be a normal string essentially it can be any type or we can transform this customer into a different type at this point in time so now if I do a for each customer name and do a console dot write it should print all the customer names and just like I discussed in the last video once we do a select nothing actually happens it's only when we loop through the array it's when the actual execution happens so let's just run this application and then we should see all the names so we see that John and Jane both the names are showing up okay so now let's say we want to create our own select extension method so let's look into what the select extension method is all about so if you can see in the intelligence the select returns an ion immutable of t here is showing string because you know we created a string array uh, we are returning just the string so that's why it is ion immutable of string but it's essentially it returns an ion immutable of t and then as an input it takes a func and the func takes the type on which we are looping through as the parameter and it returns another type as a selector so it's very similar to what we have seen for the new where so I'm just going to copy paste and make the necessary changes so here the change is going to be remember unlike aware where we're just taking or filtering the same object here we are transforming the object which means we need two data types right so one is an input and another is a output so here the i enumerable is essentially a t result and similarly the func that we are going to have is going to be t result so here what we are going to do is we are not going to do a if on the predicate but instead what is our goal here here our goal is to execute the predicate every single time because here and in fact we should rename this from predicate to more like a selector so we should say selector of item because that's what it is right because here we are not doing any filtering we are just and let's rename the from new to new so here there is no filtering it is just a transformation which means we we'll loop through every single item there is no predicate to do anything and we're just going to call the function which is going to transform based on whatever the user sends from the call so now let's go back and change the implementation from select and let's call it as new select and now we see that everything is working as expected we are not seeing anything let's just run this function and we see the exact same result as we saw with select now here if you are new to this video and if if you have not watched my previous video i'm just going to put a breakpoint to show that the customer name when it comes to this point will not have any item only when we loop through it's going to have so right now if i put my cursor on customer name you see that nothing is there there's no current item there's no items only if we expand the result view it's going to execute and now if i come and put a breakpoint here and if I go through see for the first item it got called it did a yield return did a printout and then for second item it got called again did a yield return 
and then print it out and then it is out of the function just like the last time. So now this is how select works. Now the other topic I wanted to discuss is select many, which is a very interesting extension method and it's very powerful in a lot of cases. Now, what is the situation we use select many? Select many is used when we want to flatten a data structure, meaning here the customer it has a hierarchical data structure. It has a name, which is one level, but phones is another level. It goes deep down another level. If we want to just select all the phone numbers, how do we do it? Like if we do a phones here, it's not going to necessarily give you all phone as an array, but if you look at the output, it's an I enumerable of phone array. It's not necessarily just I enumerable of phone. If we need something like I enumerable of phone, oh, let me, remove my method and use the normal select and you should see the same behavior, right? If you need an I enumerable of phone, that is when you are going to say select many. Now if we do select many, you can see there right now it is returning I enumerable of phone. So if we go through this, let's rename this one as customer phones and now if we go through this, it'll give you all the phones, right? So it'll give all the phones the customer has. So if I do a, and let me just make it a little bit better in terms of printout, otherwise we're just going to print object. So we'll have number and then the next one is going to be font type. And now let me run this. And if I run, we can see that all the numbers are getting printed out as expected. So now if we have to implement select many, how we are going to do it. So let's again try to do that. So as a first step, let's just copy paste this function, though there are, there are some changes and we're going to show you what are the changes. And let's name it as new select many. Now if we come back here, let's look into the syntax of select many. So it returns an I enumerable of a T, which is fine. And if you look at the func though, the func takes an I enumer it, it takes a, unlike the previously where if you look back in select, the func takes two types, T and T result. Whereas for select many, if you see that it takes T and I enumerable of T result, right? Because see phone is essentially I enumerable of T. And that's the same thing we saw here, right? Because when we are doing this, the response is, uh, is an array, right? Whereas this guy is flattening it out. So for that, what we have to do is, this is essentially I enumerable of T result. Now when we do that, the problem is the selector is going to fail now, right? Because the selector is saying, well, I cannot implicitly convert type I enumerable of T result to T result. Because if the response is I number of T result, the yield return has to return a single T result. But here it is returning multiple. Now for that, what we have to do, as you might have already guessed, we're going to have another for each layer here. And we are going to do a for each on the selector output. So we're going to do this and let's say it's an inner item. And now here we're going to say yield return inner item. And now you can see that we don't see any error anymore because now it is going to return a T result. So ultimately the yield is going to create an enumerable of T. And here, since we are doing, as, as you can see, there is no magic, right? The first for loop is looping through the top level. The second for is looping through the iterator itself and flattening it out. It is exactly how we will do for flattening out any other data structure if we have to do it ourselves. And this is demystifying how it works. So now let's go back and instead of select many, let's just do new select many and let's run and see what happens first. And we should see the exact same result. As you can see, we see the exact same result. The cell phone, home phone, cell phone, home phone with, with the numbers. Now I'm just going to put a breakpoint here just to demonstrate how it works. And so that we can debug into this function if I run and if I debug through. So first it comes inside this for, then it goes inside this for, execute the selector, gets an inner item and sends it back. And then it prints this item. At this point in time, it is flattening the data structure. And then for the second one, right now it's not going back up anymore because it is still at the first item because the first item had two of them. 
so now it is returning the second one and then now it is going to go back see now it is in the top level because it is got the second item now and then for second item it will do the yield return couple of times this is the first time and then it will do the second time yield return and then it will be done so that is all i wanted to cover today if you like this video please give me a thumbs up and if you are not subscribe to my channel and you have been getting value out of my channel please subscribe to my channel and thanks so much for watching this video